So, the most popular video that I have on my channel is me learning how to read, write, and speak some Japanese in a little over a month. And in that video, a lot of you have commented to say that you've also been learning Japanese or some other language for much longer and have not really been progressing or improving at the speed that you would like. And reading all these comments made me feel a little bit sad because first of all, I know how it feels to not feel like you're making progress in a language. And secondly, I think what I did in a month is actually not really that extraordinary and can be achieved by any one of you watching. And that's why I wanted to make a video today outlining exactly how I created a study plan for Japanese and how you can do the same for whatever language that you're learning. When it comes down to it, a lot of the progress that I made in that one month didn't come down to some talent or skill for learning languages. It really came down to two main things. First of all, having a good language learning system, and secondly, being consistent. So without further ado, let me go through the step-by-step -step process that I went through just before starting to learn Japanese. And this is the same process that I'll apply to future languages that I learn as well. I'm going to break down the entire language study plan creation process into five different stages. Firstly, pre-planning. Secondly, comprehensible input, which is how you're going to absorb and start getting familiar with the language. Thirdly, learning grammar. Fourthly, output, meaning using the language. And fifthly, building a system or being consistent with studying. By the way, I say that there are five different stages of this process, but it's not supposed to be sequential. Other than pre-planning, which is obviously something that you do before you start learning the language, steps two to five, you can do all together at the same time. It's not supposed to be a sequential process. So the first step in pre-planning is to figure out your why. Let's face it guys, language learning is difficult. It's a long, rocky journey and there are going to be many moments when you feel like you just don't want to keep studying the language. And that's why you need to have a very strong motivation and why that you can always return to whenever you don't feel like you want to keep going on. For me, learning languages has always been about connecting with people, about being able to speak to people when you travel. Y también eso fue la razón por la que podía aprender español a este nivel entre un año y medio de empezar clases, empezar a tomar clases en la universidad es porque usaba el idioma cuando estaba viajando por Latinoamérica. And it's for the exact same reason that I also want to learn Japanese because I've always been fascinated with the culture. So definitely figure out your why and that's going to be what you have to keep coming back to whenever you don't feel motivated to keep on studying. The second part of the pre-planning process is to get inspired. There are so many people on the internet who have done the same thing that you've done, which is basically learn a foreign language and a lot of them to a level of near fluency. Every time I want to start a language, I just go on YouTube and I binge a bunch of people who've done exactly that. Some of the YouTubers who've been able to learn Japanese to a near fluent or native level, in my opinion, um, have been Dogen, um, Matt vs Japan. Um, I really like watching his videos whereby he goes into the VR chat room and tries to pretend that he's Japanese. And he usually fools a lot of Japanese people into thinking that he's actually a native Japanese person, which I, I love watching. There's also Oriental Pearl, who um, goes onto the streets of Japan and speaks to Japanese people in real time. You can also consider watching other polyglot YouTubers for inspiration. And my favorite ones are uh, Lindy Botts, Elise Speaks, as well as Luca Lamperiello. And Luca specifically has been learning languages longer than I've been alive and is also a language coach. And so he has a ton of videos on his channel, which are very useful for language learners in general. In fact, after watching my video, go and watch this video of his, which is honestly the best how to learn a language video that I've ever seen on YouTube. And that's saying a lot because I've watched a lot of them. The third and final pre-planning step is to calibrate your expectations. Be realistic about how fast you can improve based on your past language learning experiences. Now, this is super important. If you've never learned a language before, have never been exposed to your target language, or have never learned another language in the same language family, the amount of time they are going to reach certain language learning benchmarks is simply going to be longer than someone else who's already been exposed to their language or language learning in general. And the reason why I bring this up is because it's important for you guys to remember that good 
progress looks different for everyone. For example, the reason why I was able to make pretty decent progress in my Japanese one month language learning video is because I first of all have had experience learning Chinese, which means that it's easier for me to pick up kanji. And secondly, I've had experience learning Spanish on top of learning Chinese. And that's why I've already been familiar with the best language learning techniques that help me learn faster. I'm just bringing this up to remind you to try and not to compare your progress with someone else's because that other person might have just started from a very different point. The fourth and final step is for you to gather your resources. And fundamentally, I think you really only need two. First of all, a notebook or somewhere to keep your notes. And secondly, a textbook. And fundamentally, I would recommend just stick to one textbook. Um, for a language that's a little bit more complex, like Japanese, you might need to have multiple notebooks for kanji, hiragana, katakana, and then for grammar. But overall, for a language that's simpler, like Spanish, I, when I was learning Spanish, I just used one textbook. And just focusing on that one resource really helped me to just not feel overwhelmed by the amount of things that I had to learn. Now, what is comprehensible input? Basically, it's content that you can understand and is very basic, but also exposes you to the language. Comprehensible input allows you to learn like a baby. Like, how do babies learn languages? Fundamentally, it's because every single day, every single second of their lives, they're exposed to the language. And in order to survive or in order to communicate, they need to absorb the language and then use it. So fundamentally, learning a language is two things. It's input whereby you learn how the language sounds and looks and output, which is basically speaking or writing, right? So those are the four main holistic skills of language learning, which is learning how to speak, write, read, and listen. And we're gonna go more in depth into that later on in this video. But fundamentally, in this stage, all you have to do is find sources of comprehensible input that interest you. So this can look like number one, finding good music. I personally have playlists for every single language that I learn or I have learned in the past and I still listen to them all the time. It's a form of passive exposure to the language. And a pro tip here is to actually sing the song and that way you can practice the pronunciation, um, you learn how to read the lyrics um, and that's a great form of output. But we're getting a bit ahead of ourselves, so let's go back to comprehensible input. Beyond music, something else that you can consider is um, finding YouTube channels or podcasts that you really like in your target language. Try and make these podcasts and YouTube videos around topics that you would otherwise watch in your native language. For example, if you watch a lot of cooking shows in English, then watch some cooking shows in Japanese. That's really important because you want to make sure that what you're watching is actually interesting to you. If not, you're not going to continue using that resource, right? Um, and thirdly, you can consider switching your phone over to your target language. For example, my phone is completely in Spanish. Uh, I should have switched over to Japanese when I was learning Japanese, but I wasn't ready for that level of commitment. <laughs> Fourthly is to watch shows, watch Netflix shows in your target language. Something else that you can consider is using this browser extension called Language Learning with Netflix, which allows you to caption um, the shows whilst you're watching it so that you can even take notes if you wanted to. And fifthly, of course, we can't forget reading as a very important skill. Uh, you can take the more traditional route and try to find short stories or books to read in your target language, but I personally find that a little bit intimidating. And so what I usually do is read news articles in the target language. Something else that you could do is to follow social media accounts. That way, you know, you're, you're learning about the language in context, right? Like how do people who are native speakers actually use the language? Yes, I know learning grammar doesn't sound very exciting and it can also seem very complicated and overwhelming sometimes. I as well, before I started seriously learning languages, found learning grammar to be a chore. But honestly speaking, learning grammar helps you identify patterns when you're learning the language. And I found that learning grammar actually really helps me craft better sentences when I'm in conversations or when I'm writing um, passages, for example. So overall, grammar is fundamentally the structure of the language, right? So that's why it's important to learn it. 
I'm not going to go super in depth into the exact step by step process that you should go through to learn grammar because everyone likes to learn grammar a little bit differently. Fundamentally, I would suggest to just go through a textbook. But if you're learning a language on your own and you need some guidance, here is what I started out with. The first thing I would do is learn the basic script of the language and how to pronounce it. If you're learning a language like Japanese, Chinese, Arabic, Thai, all these languages would require you to learn a separate script. And in that case, you would need to also learn how to pronounce that script. Even languages that do not have completely separate scripts oftentimes either have additional things um, that an English speaker might not have to contend with in the alphabet. For example, the Spanish N with a diphthong, like you wouldn't know how to pronounce that if you were only an English speaker. So I would recommend to start out with that. What are the different scripts? What are the new components of an alphabet? Um, and how do you pronounce them? Is how I would start. Secondly, I would learn the most basic parts of speech. Now, when you look at sentences, they're fundamentally made up of words, right? But like each word serves a separate function. For instance, in a most basic sentence, you would have subject, verb, object. Sammy likes apples. That's why in order to start building the most basic sentences, you need to know what these categories are. So learn what nouns are, what pronouns are. Pronouns are things like he, I, she, himself, herself, they, that, this, who, what, why. Um, learning adjectives, learning articles, which is uh, the, learning verbs, learning adverbs, learning conjunctions, which are but, and, because. Right? These are all fundamental basic elements of a language that you need in order to craft a sentence, whether you're speaking or you're writing. Thirdly, I would recommend that you practice verb conjugation. Conjugating a verb basically changes it in some way that it gives you information about the verb. For example, in Japanese, conjugating a verb can tell you about whether the action happened in the past or the present, who you're talking to, whether you need to be polite or it's a casual conversation. It tells you whether you're using it in a positive or negative sense. But the thing is, verb conjugation works a bit differently for every language. For example, in Spanish, and if I'm not wrong, the other Romance languages, you need to conjugate a verb depending on whether you are doing the action, someone else is doing the action, whether a group of people are doing the action. So it's it's complicated and every language is different. That's why you need to familiarize yourself with the verb conjugations that your language uses. It sounds very complicated, but it's really just a natural part of learning the language. You will naturally encounter verb conjugations because, well, you need to conjugate a verb in order to use it. Just get yourself a textbook and you'll be fine. Also, there are many verb conjugators online that you can use for assistance. Um, I like this one for Japanese and this one for Spanish. Whew, okay guys, we are nearly done with the grammar part. I know it's a little bit dry, but stick with me. Um, the next tip that I'm going to give you is to try and notice the grammar patterns that you are learning coming up in your comprehensible input. For example, if you were learning about verb conjugations, did you notice how like that specific verb conjugation was used in a podcast you were listening to this morning? Right, so trying to connect the dots between what you are listening to um, or reading for comprehensible input and what you are learning is a great way, I think, to actually solidify what you're learning in your head. And of course, the next way to solidify what you are learning is to actually use it. And this is where we go into the output stage. Remember earlier in this video, I was talking a little bit about the four main skills that come with language learning, listening, speaking, writing, and reading. And usually you would need to practice all of these skills when you're learning a language. Listening and reading comes in in the input stage. And the output stage is when you start speaking and writing in the language. Now, my experience is that a lot of the times people tend to skimp out on this stage because people can be afraid to use their language. I mean, this was me back when I was learning Chinese in school, right? I never wanted to use the language because I genuinely thought I sucked at Mandarin Chinese. And because of that, I never used the language and hence I never really improved. So my first tip here is really just to not be afraid of making mistakes, especially when it comes to speaking because that's the only way you're going to get better. So make more mistakes and make them sooner so that you can learn from them and become better. 
Writing is also really important in this output process. I would encourage you to write in your target language, to keep a daily journal in your target language. Um, also, something that you can consider is keeping a social media account that you only use in the target language. For speaking, I would highly recommend that you find a native speaker who can help you. Um, I have personally like to use apps like Speaky and Tandem um, to find a language partner. Usually, it really helps when the other person is trying to learn your native language so that there's a win-win situation and you both get to learn from each other. Consistency is really what I think is key to language learning. If you set aside 30 minutes to an hour every single day to work on the language, you are going to get better and there's no questions asked about that. Of course, you need to be working on the right things, but fundamentally, if you learn something new about your language every single day, you are going to make improvements. Making language learning a consistent habit is, I think, something that could be an entire video in and of itself. But if you're short on time and you're looking for an easy way to gain exposure to a new language, I would recommend Busu, which is a language learning app that is very kindly sponsoring today's video. Now, I'm usually not a big fan of language learning apps, but I've been using Busu for a few weeks and I can understand its appeal. Busu combines a lot of the aspects of language learning that I mentioned in this video, especially learning the grammar and output. It helps you learn relevant vocabulary, grammar conjugation, as well as Japanese scripts, hiragana, katagana, and kanji. Something else that I really like about them is that they give you an option to create a study plan. You can set the amount of time that you want to study every week and exactly what days you want to study. And the app will remind you to get it done. This goes back to what I was saying earlier about making language learning a consistent habit. On top of that, you can have it as an app on your phone, which makes it easy to just learn languages on the go. An app like Busu, I think, is good to supplement your learning. I don't think it should be the only source that you use to learn a language, but it's good to keep what you have learned fresh in your mind. In case you guys are curious about how Busu compares to other language learning apps like Duolingo, like I was, I'll leave a good video that I found about that topic in the description below. Now, that was a long video. If you got to the end, thank you so much for watching and all the best for your language learning adventures. Tell me down below what language you're learning next and I hope this video helped. And with that, I'll see you guys again real soon. Bye.